Hi, my name is Jan Seiner, and I'm a longtime owner of Aerotrek and the senior project manager here at the Erwin Heimer Group. I stay in touch with many owners and often get asked a lot of questions about how an RV works. Today, I'd like to spend a few minutes and give you a better understanding of an RV's electrical system. I'm calling this RV Electrical 101. For the record, I'm not going to get into specifics about amps or ohms, or any of the lingo you've probably read or heard about. We'll do our best to keep things as simple as possible. If we use any numbers, they will be simply for illustrative purposes. So with that said, let's begin. The first thing you need to know is that there are two types of electrical power. Alternating current, known as AC, and direct current, known as DC. Your house has AC supplied to it via your electric company. DC power is more commonly seen as a standalone battery, like those found in your car engine or in small handheld devices like calculators or TV remotes. The biggest difference between the two is that AC can be transported long distances without a lot of power loss, so it's used for distribution. DC can be stored and AC cannot be. The electricity in your house wiring is AC, but believe it or not, there are probably several devices found in your house that run on DC. You just don't realize it because those devices have built-in converters that take AC power and make DC. Your TV and your computer most likely run on DC. Your microwave or air conditioner, on the other hand, run on AC. To you, the homeowner, the impact of AC and DC is almost non-existent. You are just so used to plugging something in that you don't give a second thought as to what kind of power your device is using. Owning an RV requires that you understand both types of electrical power. So here's what you need to know. First of all, the source of your power in your home is fed by an electric company. In your RV, you can hook up to the same power grid by connecting a power cord to a convenient outlet. This will be an AC feed. Now, if you're not able to connect to an AC feed, you will then have to use power from the 12 volt batteries located in your RV. We will call the outside outlet and the batteries your power sources. Both your AC and DC sources are first fed into a distribution box before they hit any outlets or devices. This is similar to the breaker panel you would find inside your house or the fuse box in your car. Ideally, you should leave all the circuits on in this panel. If for some reason your outlet, light, or device doesn't work, this fuse or circuit panel is the first thing you should check. Excess power can trip a circuit just like at home. Now let's assume you found a 30 amp RV outlet and you want to power all your AC outlets and devices. To do so, plug your cord into the outlet and turn your inverter on. This will power on the AC portion of your RV electrical system. To power your DC devices, you need to turn the battery disconnect on, which means your coach is now drawing power from the batteries. These batteries do run down, so if you're plugged in and your inverter is on, then the inverter uses its battery charging circuitry and converts the AC feed from the outside outlet to DC power, which then recharges your battery. Now, if you do not have access to an outside outlet, you will be using your batteries to power the coach. This means the DC charge in the batteries will have to be inverted for some devices requiring AC. So you will again need to ensure that the inverter is on and DC is made available by pressing the battery disconnect. This will provide all the necessary AC and DC power throughout your coach. Now there is no way we can tell you how long your coach batteries are going to provide power. The amount of draw by things like the lights, outlets, and other devices will vary and depend on many factors. But this is an absolute truth. Batteries do run out and recharging them is necessary. I often get asked how long it takes to recharge the batteries. Again I say, how much power did you draw out and how much power are you continuing to draw as the batteries are being recharged? Let's just say your batteries are down to 1200 watt hours. If you're running your AC and it draws 1200 watts, and you're running your fridge which is drawing 50 watts, and your outlets are hooked up to various items and they're drawing 100 watts, then in less than an hour your batteries will be empty. 
Now, if you begin charging and you put back 900 watts an hour, then you can see the dilemma. There is no way you can recharge those batteries if you continue to consume that much power. The quickest way to recharge your batteries is to minimize the draws while you're recharging. The numbers above are all made up. This is an example of the mathematical process I use when thinking about my batteries. It's just like your checking account. You have money coming in and money going out. And if you're spending faster than you're making, then you will run out of money. As I've stated, there's no way we can tell you how long a battery will last before it runs out. There are just too many variables. What I can tell you is the top energy hogs are usually your air conditioner, induction stove, microwave, and your instant hot water heater. If you set the temperature a little higher on your thermostat, your air conditioner will use less power. Choosing your parking spot can have a huge impact on how your AC works. Cooling a shaded coach in 80 degree weather is significantly easier than a bright sun in 90 degrees. This philosophy can work for all your devices. Think less is more. So as I've been saying, there are too many variables to draw absolute rules about your batteries. With time, you will learn how to manage your power usage and extend the life of your batteries. You will begin to understand how much each device draws and learn to use them more efficiently. The key point to all of this is to understand that if you are not plugged in, then managing your energy becomes something you have to think about. I hope this short video has been helpful. If you still have questions, then please don't hesitate to contact us here at the Erwinheimer Group. Take care and enjoy your journeys.